Okay, so this next question simply says that show that x is equal to minus 3 is a root of the function. So if it's a root of it, it must satisfy the, func the function. So subbing in minus 3 instead of x, when you multiply it out, what should happen is that it should satisfy it and it should equal to 0. Okay, so we got minus 54 plus 45 plus 12 minus 3 and f of minus 3 equals to 0 therefore x is equal to minus 3 is a root now it also says to find the other roots well what are we going to do here well, if x is equal to minus 3 is a root, then we also know x plus 3 is a factor. Now, we cannot just go and factorize this straight away because it's cubic. What we need to do is actually divide in x plus 3. Divide in this factor, x plus 3, into 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 3. We don't need any placeholders because we have a cubed, squared, an x, and then a constant at the end. So asking ourselves, x multiplied by what is 2x cubed? Well, that's 2x squared. So 2x squared by x is 2x cubed. 2x squared by 3 is 6x squared. Change both signs. We have minus 1x squared, bring down minus 4x. x by what is minus 1x squared? Minus x, minus x by x, minus 1x squared, minus x by 3, minus 3x. Change both signs again. Minus 1x, bring down minus 3. x by what is minus 1x? It's just minus 1. Minus 1 by x is minus 1x, minus 1 by 3, minus 3. Change the signs, plus, plus, 0. So we know 2x squared minus x minus 1 is a factor. Now, we need to be able to factorise that down a little bit further. You can use the guide number on this. The guide number is 2 times minus 1, the guide number, that gives us minus 2. So what are the factors of minus 2 that add up to minus 1? Well, the factors of minus 2 are minus 2 uh, plus 1. So we can go 2x squared. I might just move this off to the side a little bit more. 2x squared minus 2x plus 1x minus 1. 2x by x minus 1. The second bracket must be the same. So x by uh, x by 1. There we go. 2x plus 1. x minus 1. And we also 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. We want the roots, the question said, not the factors. And the other two roots. So 2x is equal to minus 1, x is equal to minus a half, x minus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. All three roots. How do I know it should have three roots? Well it'll definitely have three roots because it's a cubic. Now whether all three of them are real depends on the function. You could have one real and two imaginary, or you could have all three real. So pretty nice question, actually very nice question, nice straightforward little bit of algebra, and you should be pretty happy with that. Okay. Next part of the question. Find the coordinates of the local maximum point and the local minimum point of the function. 
Now, local maximum and local minimum should be jumping out at you and screaming something. Okay? They should be screaming differentiation. Maximum, minimum. So we know our function, or our y, is equal to 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 3. So if it asks for a max or a min, you should be differentiating and setting it equals to 0. 6x squared plus 10x minus 4. We're going to set that equals to 0 and solve it. We can divide everything by 2, so it's 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. Factorize it out. Again, you can use the guide number to factorize it, or to solve it, you could use the minus b formula. So the guide number in this case is minus 6. Factors of minus 6 that add up to 5 are 6 and minus 1, plus 6 and minus 1, so 3x squared. Doesn't matter if I go with the 6x or the minus 1 first. 3x, x plus 2. Second bracket must be the same. x by what? Minus 1, minus 1. So 3x minus 1, x plus 2. Now if you can skip straight down to that, absolutely perfect. 3x is equal to 1, x is equal to a third. x plus no, x plus 2 is equal to 0, we can just go to x is equal to minus 2. So they are the x coordinates of both turning points. Find the coordinates of the local max and the local min. Now it says coordinates, so we want the y values. Okay, but before we do that, we can go and find d2y dx squared. That is the second derivative of y, so it's 12x plus 10. When we say x is equal to 2, x equal to minus 2, sorry, x equal to minus 2, we have 12 by minus 2 plus 10, which is equal to minus 14, which means there's a local, as it's less than 0, it's a local max when x is equal to minus 2, and just double check, x is equal to a third, 12 by a third plus 10 is equal to 14, so it's local min when x is equal to a third. Because it wants the coordinates, we must also find the y, uh, y coordinates at both points. So f of minus 2 is equal to 2 by minus 2 cubed plus 5 by minus 2 squared minus 4 by minus 2 minus 3. f of minus 2 when multiplied it out is 9. So we know we had our local maximum at x is equal to minus 2. So local maximum will be minus 2 9. Local max at minus 2, 9. You must also find the local minimum. A third is equal to 2. A third cubed plus 5 by a third squared minus 4 by a third minus 3. F a third is now a funny number. Minus 100 over 27. And going back, we knew we had our local minimum when x is equal to a third. So the local minimum was a third, 100 over 27. That's using the second derivative test up here. The second derivative test. Okay, the marks for this question were 0, 3, 4, 5. Actually, a very nice question and one that you should really have practiced before and not, not be too worried about a question of that style. Now, the next question kind of touches on what I was talking about earlier. We know we have a cubic. Okay, so it looks something like that. Or a positive cubic. It looks something like that. Where A is a constant, has only one real root. So, 
either we want it to look like something like this, where it only has one real root here, or we want it to look something like that, where there's only one real root there. We knew the maximum point is that y is equal to 9, and we know the minimum point is y is equal to minus 100 over 27. So you've got to think of what does this a do to the function. That a either shifts the function up, that, that it's effectively, let's go back a little, adding a constant on at the end here. And what would it do to the function? It either shifts the function up or down. Okay. So what the function currently looks like is something like that. Okay. And we would want to have the function shifted upwards to make sure that the minimum is above the y-axis, the x-axis, apologies above the x-axis. Well, how far would you have to shift it up? We would have to shift it up 100 over 27 to force that section upwards. So it only, so we'd end up with a situation like this where you'd only have one real root. Alternatively, you could shift it downwards. Okay. Now, how far would you shift it down to get something like this? Well, we would want the maximum to be below the x-axis. So this gets shifted down and it ends up something like this. We would want it to be bigger than, well, let's go back, losing half of it. We would want it to be bigger, or shifted downwards, more than the nine. So it could either go up 100 over 27 or down 9. Okay, so how to shift it up more than 100 over 27? We would want A to be bigger than 100 over 27. Or if I wanted to shift it downwards, I would want A to be less than minus 9. Okay, and that is your answer right there. In 0, 3, 5 for this question, Kind of a difficult one to, to comprehend if you don't understand what each coefficient does to the actual function. But remember with all linear, quadratic, um, cubic, the constant at the end tells you the y-intercept. Or another way of thinking about it is shifting it up or shifting it down. Okay. Uh, in general, quite a nice question. You should be pretty happy with it. Uh, quite accessible at the start, very, very nice. Section A, section B, also quite nice as well. So in general, I'd be pretty happy with that question.